and uh, maybe even Ozzy Osbourne. And he got caught smuggling 5,000 pounds of marijuana into Florida on his Learjet, <laughs> which is like, <coughs> I don't know what, know what type Learjet it was, but it, that, that must have been heavy. And uh, so he didn't go to jail, but instead the judge said, well, I'll let you go, but as a part of your, uh, your, your get-out-of-jail-free ticket, you have to do a number of anti-drug, anti-alcohol concerts. Oh, that, I thought you were going to say he has to do reality TV. No, well, no, this, this is 1988. And that's how I wound up in Russia, actually, because they had the Moscow Music Peace Festival, um, which he organized. And this is before the wall came down. And so we went on a plane from Newark, New Jersey, with those you know, like Bon Jovi, Motley Crue, Ozzy Osbourne. We stopped in Germany to pick up the Scorpions. And then we did this uh, show, it was like 10 days at uh, Lenin Stadium in Moscow. But the funniest thing was this plane, which was a, a chartered plane, you know, like a, oh, like a, it was like a DC something, like a cigar tube, really long and very uncomfortable, particularly for that flight. Everyone was hammered. It's like, it's, it, this was the anti-drug, anti-alcohol. Ozzy Osbourne, I will, not, will never rid myself of him standing in the aisle because the, the lavatory was occupied. And he's going, Sharon, Sharon, there's someone in the loo. And Sharon, by the way, was this fat little pudgy English chick with bad complexion. And, uh, and Ozzy couldn't get in the bathroom. And he pe- peed himself right there, right in the aisle. You know, like a six-year-old, a huge stain in the front of his pants. It was just unbelievable. And that was the get-out-of-drug-free ticket that uh, Doc McGee put together. And everyone's hammered the whole way through. And then uh, Bon Jovi's doctor on the way back was handing out Halcyon to everybody. Yeah, it'll, help, it'll help you sleep. I'm like, oh, that'll help me sleep. I was messed up for two weeks. I was suicidal almost. So anyway, the point is, end users of drugs are stupid because the real game is uh, up at the top there. Yep. Yeah, right there where the poppies are grown and protected by the agricultural division of our armed forces. Yeah, of course, we can moan and groan about this till hell freezes over. It doesn't make a bit of difference, and obviously nobody thought much of our show last week, so <laughs> can I say? Hey, sweet. Yeah, I got an interesting one. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I picked up on, uh, uh, apparently they're running out of material on Meet the Press. Uh, well, so they played an old Meet the Press show f- from 1953. Uh, did, did, about- do you notice the format of those early shows was very different, where you had two desks and you have a desk on one side and that was the press and then you'd have a desk on the other side of the studio and that was the person who was meeting the press yeah and they were getting grilled yeah and it was cool and now it's like hey let's have a little powwow we'll have a little round table discussion yeah i know and they never call anybody on anything i mean i remember the time that uh, cheney was on some years ago denying this and that and, and they're like, oh so well you said no i didn't i never said that oh okay whatever and then they went off to the next topic and then, of course john stewart shows cheney you know a clip of cheney saying exactly that whatever it was and, and then showing him denying ever saying it and that you know which is actual real yeah real reporting there hello real reporting That's as good. opposed to this 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 kind of thing script so, um, uh, I'm just you got a clip, you got a this clip, clip for this? Yeah, I do. It's Elizabeth Bentley. She was a, uh, Elizabeth Bentley turned herself into the FBI. And I don't need a little background. She was a Soviet spy. Uh, we didn't know that there was such a thing, apparently, the way she tells the story. <laughs> as, a, as Soviet spies? <laughs> as Soviet spies. And during World War II, they were in this country, and it turns out that she, uh, uh Turned herself in in 1945 to to become a government a spy for the FBI or maybe even a double agent. Nobody really knows, but whatever the case was, she uh, implicated uh, something like 150 federal employees for all working for Stalin, <laughs> and large large part of the House on American Activities stuff and a lot of other things were all catch up because once it turned out that she was right. That there was all these spies in the government, uh, everybody panicked, and they were, you know, then you had uh, McCarthy hearings and all the rest of it, and everybody got paranoid and thought there was a communist under every bed, and it's large part due to this woman. Anyway, she. Uh, it, what's interesting, if you look at look her up on Wikipedia, they mention that she was uh, part of, you know, she was. She turns herself into the FBI, and apparently the FBI at the time was in conflict with the OSS. Which, which is, is the, the pre- first CIA, the precursor to the CIA. The precursor to the CIA, because, because she had identified numerous people in OSS that were Soviet spies. 
they were very deeply <laughs> embedded yeah. in our intelligence agency. And uh, so the FBI wanted to take over all intelligence gathering. You know, they didn't want there to be a CIA. They wanted to do it because they said you can't trust anybody. It sounds so much like this is a bunch of grown up children who just were still playing Green Army men, doesn't it? Well, you can play the Elizabeth Bentley thing. It's, it's actually kind of interesting from a historical perspective. This is from 1953 on Meet the Press. Our guest on Meet the Press, ladies and gentlemen, is Miss Elizabeth Bentley, former Soviet spy. <laughs> can you explain how you got away with so much for so long and how others got away with it for so long? Were you fellows so clever or were we so dumb? Well, I would say it was a combination of the two. For one thing, Russia was considered our ally, and presumably the intelligence people were concentrating on the Germans. For another thing, I don't think Americans in general knew too much about communist espionage methods. They simply didn't expect that sort of thing. And for another thing, the communists worked very hard and took a lot of precautions to keep these things secret. When you went to the FBI in 1945, you said cold, I believe. What was your reception? Were they surprised to see you? Did they were they credulous? Were they incredulous? Were they uh, did they doubt your word or did they accept you as a bona fide spy? Well, at first I couldn't tell whether they believed or disbelieved because they were extremely courteous but noncommittal. But later I was told about a month I think after the story I told them my story. One of them told me that they had been checking frantically and that they were amazed at the accuracy of it. Had they indicate they'd had no knowledge of your work before? Was it all brand new to them, do, do you think? Well, now, they wouldn't have been likely to tell me well, You that. could tell by the expression on their face, couldn't you? No, because the FBI are good trained intelligence agents and they keep poker faces. Three years after her defection, Bentley, who became known as the Red Spy Queen, testified before Congress and gave evidence of widespread Soviet espionage in the United States during World War II. The Russian spies sent home this week appear to have uncovered little of value during their time in the U.S. <laughs> and we'll be right back. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> that's so funny. I want to be introduced that way as well. I am Adam Curry, former Soviet spy. That's a great. That's, <laughs> that's great. So I like it. That, that's a, didn't you hear the beginning of the report? <laughs> yeah, it was, no, it was yeah. pretty funny. Our guest on Meet the Press, ladies and gentlemen, is Miss Elizabeth Bentley, former Soviet spy. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Adam Curry, former Soviet spy. I'm going to get business Soviet cards made. Spy. That's nice. So, uh, so of course, they had, to, they, had, they had nothing to, no guest. Everyone's off uh, in the Hamptons and, uh, or at uh, Camp David. And so they, so they just pulled out. So, oh, this will relate. Yeah, they do a little yeah. database search. Spy, um, spy, a spy, spy, spy. There's a bunch of services apparently that have cropped up recently, which are being used by Rachel Maddow and Oberman and Stewart to that some have, extent. Yeah, they have the old, uh, all the old archives. People have have finally cataloged these things. Yeah. You know, the old the, the archives of video. Because, you know, video is difficult to catalog because it's video. You don't have, you know, there's not a, not you can't digitized. do a word search. Yeah, yeah. So people have had to document these things to an extreme, and now they have keyword searches, and you can get clips from, like, you know, the mid-50s to right to the present. And so you can put together some pretty funny things if you if you just want to get clips from, you know, guys saying stupid stuff. So here's a, a relatable story about the, the whole spy thing. Um, the uh, Weekly Standard is coming out uh, on Monday with a series, a damning series, I tell you, about the uh, intelligence community's expansive use of contractors since 9-11. Yeah, I've heard about <laughs> this. This is a story that's been developing for the past year or so. And so, of course, you know, I think the, the number one thing that you might not want to do if you want to have a real tight intelligence community is use contractors. <laughs> it doesn't seem like a really good policy. I know. Yes. It's just to save money and to do less 1099. It's not to something. save money. It's to waste money on jabroni friends. Who, oh, yeah, I'll set yeah. up a little. Yeah, no, yeah. no, like the rationale is to save money. Yeah, I mean, right. If somebody asks you why you're doing it, you say, well, it's to save money. Oh, it saves money. Well, everyone knows it doesn't save money. Everyone knows it's just to, to funnel money to your buddies. Everyone sets up a little consultancy. That's all these guys yeah. who are appearing on CNN and Fox and... You know, they're all former uh, CIA. This guy, yeah, former CIA intelligence uh, consultants. Yeah, it's a big joke. It really is a big joke. It's it, and we still and that's why these spy movies. You know, we've got. Uh, of course, we have uh, Angelina Jolie coming out with Salt. 
which is, uh, I have to say, that is still kind of the best timing with the whole Russian story. So that, you know, the whole Russian spy story, that's still, 